We've got we've got a couple of bumps uh, and knocks from yesterday. Um, nothing too serious except Borna. Borna has ruled out for the next couple of games. Uh, he's got a hamstring issue, um, which is a blow for us because he's come back really strong and looked really, you know, a class act on that left side. But um, it's an unfortunate one, and um, we we'll bear with him, support him, and, and give him the. The treatment he needs to try and get him back as soon as possible. Ryan Jack, who's open? Uh, he's still, still not perfect, still not great. Um, he's going to have a, a little, a little goal this morning. See how he feels from that. Um, I think it'll have to be a last-minute one with Ryan in terms of the decision. Um, but we're hoping that he can pull through because he's been uh, tremendous for us. Been really consistent. Uh, does a great job and. Um, he thoroughly deserves his, his extension on, on his deal. I think he's, he's worked for that, he's earned that, and he's a, a shining light for everyone else in the squad because he's been rewarded for all that hard work. Arfield and Macaulay, how are you looking? Uh, too soon, too soon. And Ryan Kent, has he got any chance to play this week? Ryan's working hard with the physio. Um, it, it's a tough one because it's one that you can't rush or force. Um, those of you that know uh, hamstrings as well as I do, uh, they're very... Very tough ones at the back end of the rehab. Um, he's not a million miles away, but he's one that we're basically analysing every single day, but he is progressing well. Given the sort of problems you've had over the last seven, eight games in terms of creativity and taking chances, is a part of your thing, is, is he worth a gamble, especially is the importance of these next two games? Uh, what, in terms of taking a gamble? Mm -hmm. uh, or his fitness? I, I think we're, we're always prepared to... Um, Listen to the player. I think if the player tells us that you know he feels like it's fine to take a small risk or a gamble, of course we'll listen to it. But I always look look to the medical department. They're the experts. I always look to my doctor, my, my physical coaches, and and we make a collective decision. Uh, of course, as a manager, you want to push them uh, in a certain direction, but you've also got to think about the care of the player. So we won't take any unnecessary risks. Um, but you, we, we, we have a slight advantage, if you like, that there is a break after the next two games. So if anyone's a bit stiff and sore from taking these small risks and gambles, then you've got that to fall back on. But at the same time, we don't want to be careless and, and reel someone out for, for weeks and months, if you know what I mean. What did the, the second half yesterday show you about <coughs> the resolve that you've got in your players that when they faced a bit of adversity, that they were able to respond to this thing? Yeah, I think we've showed many a times throughout the season we've got character and we've got guts. Um, but we've also showed that at times we've turned up at places and just thought we've got the divine right to, to, to beat the opposition. Um, we, we weren't the, the real Rangers team that I've seen on so many occasions in the first half. And I said that after the game. Um, some of my quotes were, were taken out of context, if you like. It wasn't what I meant to be disrespectful to St. Johnson or Tommy Wright. Um, Tommy went out of his way to welcome me here. Um, he's someone who I've got the utmost respect for, St. Johnson as well, and, and all the teams and managers in the league. So some of my quotes were misunderstood or, or taken the wrong way, so I apologise for that. But I think it showed clearly that we were second best in the first half, all over the pitch. St. Johnson were excellent, the best team. They also had periods in the second half where they caused us a few issues. Um, but you've seen it quite clearly yesterday that we showed two sides of us. Um, one that was second best, um, and then second half we played with character and, and belief and purpose, and we got our rewards for that. You've had a couple of issues this season with, with the team perhaps starting slowly. I mean, is this something that you think needs to be addressed and, and sort of snuffed out, or is it just you know, perhaps the level of the player that you're, you're dealing with? Is it, is it just something Listen, it's something we will try and improve on, of course, but I think you've also got to take into consideration the amount of games we've played and. Um, you know, a lot of these players have, have played every game and every minute for us and they've, they've really emptied everything they've got and, you know, they're, they're really, really looking forward to this break to freshen up and re-energise. So, at times it is normal that you're a little bit off it. Um, but what I can't accept is that uh, the majority of the team are. I can understand certain individuals who've, who've played the majority of the games, but as a team we just didn't turn up in the first half. We waited for the game and we have done it on on quite a few occasions, so it's my job to try and make sure that happens as little as possible. Stephen, on Alfredo Morelos, I mean, it just seems that Spellers are just not enough, you know, those two goals yesterday, just how good is he, how good can he be and, and, and how... I've said it, I've said it on, on many occasions, um, he's a top class finisher, um, <coughs> he, he, he must be a nightmare to play against, um, because, you know, I, I see him you know, constantly giving 
defenders, tough afternoons. You know, he, defenders go out of the way to, to make it very, very difficult for Alfredo. Uh, they try everything they can to stop him. Um, but he just carries on and he keeps wanting to score goals. He's got that hunger. He comes alive in the box. What I will say is um, the team are doing ever so well to provide the service for him. Um, we're crossing the ball um, in high numbers. We're creating chances in high numbers. And as a number nine, that must be that must be brilliant for Alfredo. Um, but at big times and big moments, he's stepped up for us. Um, so we're really pleased with him. And I think he's benefiting from all the hard work he put in in pre-season. Do you think maybe there's an inevitability that you may be facing with some bids coming in for him in January? That's football. All All good players. Uh, around the world, uh, receive interest and bids and blah blah blah. It's that's normal. There's nothing I can do about that. I imagine it's one that you're, you're definitely want to hang on to and turn the phone off if there's any bids on your on way. No, 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 I won't turn the phone off. I'll listen to what they've got to say. I'll be respectful, but um, he's going nowhere. That's the message. Um, I've said it before. I've given the message before, so he's going nowhere. Does yesterday show why you know you've had issues in terms of discipline and things with him this season? Why you have to persevere him, or you have to give him your backing because he is so crucial to you? In, in terms of Alfredo, yeah, of course, it's certainly an area we're working on with him, and he's trying really hard. And I think you can see signs of that maturity and that improvement coming through. As a footballer, ability-wise and talent, it's it's not in question. He's, he's a top player, um, and he can become even better if he becomes more rounded and yeah, a better person on the pitch and. And stuff, but he is really trying. Um, you know, a lot of people have made uh, comments to me that he is trying very hard. But that goes to all of us as a team. Um, you know, we we've had a a very good campaign so far, um, and you often wonder, you know, where we where we could be if we didn't miss them big key important players uh, in key fixtures at key times during the season. You know, could we have a better point, points total? Could we be in a more healthier position than we're in now? Um, so if we improve that aspect of our game in the second half of the season, uh, we keep important players fit, um, we believe we can be more consistent. You got a lot of booking yesterday, what was your, your thoughts on that? Uh, not not just yesterday, it, it, it's football in general. I mean, of course we have to think about the supporters, safety and, and this type of stuff, but... Um, you know, I, I'm a, a, a person who likes to see people celebrate. I, I like the emotional side of the game. Um, I think it's something in our game as a whole, worldwide, that we have to look at in terms of punishing players for, for getting excited because, you know, players sacrifice an awful lot and a lot of hard work and put a lot of effort into it to have them special moments and to enjoy them in front of your fans. I think to be punished, uh, not just Alfredo, anyone around the world, and to miss football matches because you've been emotional on a football pitch, I think it's something we have to look at. I think he stepped off the pitch in terms of he was on the grass fairs at one point, but he wasn't on the track and he did go into the sports. Did you feel it was harsh? Well, I've, I've been in that situation and when you score a goal, you lose yourself in, in, in the moment and you get emotional, but that's what I love and that's what um, you can see in an Alfredo. He loves enjoying that um, adulation from the supporters. and um, I just think it's harsh, not just in this instance, anyone to get a, a yellow card or a second yellow card to miss a game or to be punished for for being happy on a football pitch. It's something we have to look at. Do you have to make changes? Given you said obviously about the injuries, a lot of players playing so many games, do you have to make changes for the Hibs game? Well, to be honest with you, we, we haven't got the luxury of being able to, to, to use the squad, really. We're, we're quite bare at the moment. We're doing everything we can to try and get... Uh, one or two bodies back for the for the coming games. Whether we can do that, we'll have to wait and see what the next 24, 48 hours brings. Um, we we are short at the moment in terms of numbers um, compared to how I've been for the majority of the season. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'll probably know if I can make some changes in the next 24 hours. Do you expect it to be a different type of game to last week's one? Uh, no, I think Hibs will definitely come and try and play. Um, you know, Neil Lennon certainly has that positive approach where he wants his teams to play, he wants them to attack. I think they've got personnel and set up to to play fast attacking football. Uh, whether he changes his game plan, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But um, our preparation won't change. We're at home. Um, we want to keep continuing to try and be strong at home and, and play aggressive attacking football. And we want to try and excite our fans. So. Um, 
we'll probably have to wait and see as the game starts, but we'll have uh, an approach for for two kinds of Hibernian, if you like. We'll, we'll be ready for the attacking style if they come with that a bold approach. Um, if they want to be a bit more cautious, then um, we'll have a way of playing against that as well. In terms of performance level, but you'd be happy with a repeat of last week's one just in terms sure, of yeah. level? For sure, and the second half yesterday. What have you made of uh, Hibs this season? Obviously, Neil Lennon seems far from happy mm. with some of the performances recently. Uh, I, th- I really like Hibs to watch. Um, they, they try and play football, um, they counter-attack very fast, they're very physical and mobile up front. Um, they've got some really gifted technicians within the team. Um, I think um, if you look at what they've got in the squad and their experience, they're probably in a false position in, in the league. I think you've seen our game against them, even though we played extremely well, they still carry the threat going forward. So um, we have the utmost respect for this Hibernian team and we'll have to be at it and we'll have to be at our best to get the result we want. Have you spoken to the players after the performance, obviously, in the first half yesterday? Yeah, I spoke to them at half-time and I spoke to them after the game.